Joining us now is Tarina Keene, Executive Director of NARAL Pro-Choice in Virginia. Tarina, thanks very much for your time today. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Rachel. Let me first ask you about this legal opinion that's been issued by uh, your state's attorney general, Ken Cuccinelli. It mm -hmm. is the strategy um, to make it too costly for abortion clinics in Virginia to stay in business. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he's been trying uh, to do this for many, many years, uh, especially while he was in the state Senate, uh, at least for eight years, and he did so unsuccessfully. So now he's simply trying to circumvent the legislative democratic process and uh, is, is, is doing this through this opinion and is giving the power over to the Board of Health. Why is it that regulating abortion clinics as if they are hospitals, telling them they essentially need to abide by all the same regulations that a hospital needs to abide by, why is that such a hardship for clinics? Why would that have the effect of shutting clinics down? Well, if you think about your typical doctor's office, most of them are rented facilities and they're very small. Uh, they're not hospitals. And if you had to retrofit uh, an, an existing office, whether you own the building or you don't, you're talking about $1.5 to $2 million a year to, or I'm sorry, $1.5 to $2 million total to actually have that retrofitted to become a small uh, hospital or what we call ambulatory surgical centers. And you were the source of the quote to the Washington Post that in your estimate of the 21 clinics that provide abortion services in Virginia right now, you think that 17 of them would be shut down if this went into effect? Oh, absolutely. These are small facilities uh, that simply could not meet these guidelines. And it's really sad because abortion is already very hard to access in Virginia. 86% of counties and towns in the state of Virginia do not have an abortion provider. And many of these facilities also offer reproductive health care, uh, other types of family planning services. And, uh, and also some of them are used as uh, general practitioner's offices. So if they shut down, we're talking about a lot of women losing their only access to health care. Tarina, let me ask you about this in, in the broader political context. Mm -hmm. um, Phil, Phil Klein in Kansas, mm -hmm. uh, Bob McDonnell in Virginia, Ken Cuccinelli in, in, in Virginia. These are politicians who, Republican politicians, conservative politicians, who made their vociferous opposition to abortion mm -hmm. part of their campaign for office. Crusading anti-abortion politicians are very common um, on the conservative right right now. Uh, on the other hand, Crusading for abortion rights to protect a woman's right to choose is something you hear very little about, even from very progressive Democrats who are running for office. Do you think that Republicans have been able to sort of steal this debate? Would it help to have Democrats campaigning on this issue? <laughs> I would like to see that. Um, I think, unfortunately, it has become such a, a difficult issue to talk about. Uh, they have hijacked the language. And uh, unfortunately, what, what they've also done is they've made people feel like uh, abortion is is dangerous and it's also scary. Uh, so uh, it's hard for uh, a, a pro-choice candidate, whether they're Democratic or uh, or Republican, to actually talk about this because it's so easy uh, to uh, listen to the rhetoric of the other side and, instead of actually really giving it some thoughtful analysis uh, as to why people are pro-choice and what that actually means. That means comprehensive sex education. That means uh, uh, access to family planning, uh, birth control. And if we had those two things uh, in order, uh, we could reduce the numbers of abortions in this, uh, in this country and in the state of Virginia. But no one even wants to talk about that either. Uh, it's a very difficult issue. Tarina Keene, Executive Director of NARAL Pro-Choice in Virginia. Thanks very much uh, for joining us tonight and helping us give this story a national spotlight. Appreciate it.